Without introduction, who am I? I'm a seven blood engineer who is currently doing IT infrastructure like storage and compute stuff, HPC and security. I work primarily for the for biology institutes of the Austrian Academy of Sciences. Um, I used to do web mail operations, database operations, worked a lot in data centers, uh, did front and back end development, security auditing. Used to do booths for FreeBSD and OpenBSD in Austria and support. Okay. Um, I want to do a short raise of hands. Who of you is developing open source software? Okay. Who of you already knows about environment modules? Okay. Good, it's not everybody, so that's good. I want to talk a lot to, to open source developers that are not aware of, of modules because I think most people that come from HPC sites already know them. Okay. Um, environment modules were first introduced in 1992. Uh, 1991 by John Polanyi at Lisa 5. There are concepts that were, were originally used before Linux. I think he did it all in Solaris or something like that. Environment world models are in use ever since in high performance computing and scientific computing. Um, where the product, the product is, they are the main, the main tool to abstract the environment because of ease of administration and ease of use, which, are, which, are, which you will see very soon. But most people there just refer to it as modules. So if you talk to people from HPC sites and mention modules, they're probably going to know what they're talking about. They were originally intended to be to enable multi-user environments that have different versions of the same software running at the same time without any complications. Um, traditionally, most HPC environments, which I work for today, um, do not use system packages. Some do, but not, not all do. Um, this is due to them having to, to compile with special compilers like intercompilers, special tool chains, math libraries, um, optimization of interconnect specifics like InfiniBound, or taking it with Ethernet. Um, and often scientific software is not to be found in, in, in the repositories of whatever distro you're using because some is crap <laughs> and some is not used outside of the scientific community. It's somewhat like Gentoo or Arch if you're familiar with that. So administrators have to do a lot of stuff and a lot, a lot of compiling to do for for users in the end. Um, but it's a lot more, a lot more difficult for administrators, I'd say, than using Gentoo or Arch because it's compiling the stuff is like it's it's a nightmare also most of the time because scientific software is often not written to be used by anybody else than the guy who originally wrote it. <laughs> Um, so a system to manage multiple versions um, of the same software with different functions is needed to, to maintain the stuff and for users to easily use the, um, the system and the software that comes with the system. So what environment modules basically do, they have module files that dynamically set the environment for a, a specific software or software version. Um, they may load or unload other other software or other, uh, other tool chains and module files depending on the dependencies of the modules. Examples include path, mount path, LD library path, LD preload and stuff like that you probably know from development software. So, an example from environment models, this is an L mod specific, I'll come, I'll come to that later, there are different versions of, of modules available today, but this is an example of how to load Git. In a, in a standard installation bar, so you see LD library path, mount path, and a conflict with another Git version. If the system gets already loaded, you need to unload it and stuff like that. So, implementations, of course. It was a good idea, but there, <laughs> there are like five or six different versions out, out there now. Um, modules were originally uh, written in C with the module files um, in TCL. So, people don't, didn't like TCL very much, so they did a lot of other implementations. Classical models by Fulani, as, as I mentioned before, is arguably still the, the, the most prevalent version that, uh, that is in use at HPC sites today. Um, Kent Mann of uh, University of Minnesota did a rewrite of the whole thing from C in TCL, so like, let's do this, this, this whole stuff in TCL instead. There is an uh, um, implementation in QC instead of TCL, and there is now there is an implementation in Lua, which I think is the best one. I'll come to that later. Um, similar systems include SoftEnf and .kit. These are systems, um, SoftEnf is written in C shell and .kit is, is, is compatible with different, different scripting languages. And these are very specific to the sites like Argonne National Lab and Lawrence Livermore National Lab. 
can share on different scripts that people use, like um, in large I think they have site specific stuff for approaching view computers and stuff like that. I'll talk about AirMod because it's the most awesome of the of the environment model systems and the most well maintained. So yeah. It's actively maintained by one of the most most awesome maintainers I've ever seen. Like really you, you write in a bug report and two hours later it's like, oh I fixed it already. Um, it's an active community of the mailing list is very active but people don't report many bugs. They used to. It has cool new features instead of the old module system, like automatic swapping of module files. Conflict detection, if you load, for example, two compilers to comp they conflict with each other, it will, it will spit out an error. Um, loading of modules with at least between and latest with regard to software version, that means like, you use version 2.0 or 2.5 of a version, and it said, um, I need between this and that version to be com compatible with whatever stuff I want to use. And it's, work it's working, it's also, um, it also has like a spider thing, so you type module spider, and it will print out. Um, any keyword that you, that, that, you, that you put in. It also has, has caching, which makes it much faster if you search for stuff. It also has hooks, so for example, every time you load a, you load a model, model you, can, you can do a Lua function call, for example, to do a statistic stuff, how many people are using which software version, or whatever you like. It has a TCL to Lua wrapper, so if you, if you use legacy TCL modules, um, you can easily convert them to Lua models. It has a Shell and environment wrapper, which basically you print out the environment and it just wraps the thing to a Lua module. It also has specific stuff to for GPU and C and file computing, but I won't go into them. So examples. Modular way, this is an example of our site, it's a very small subset of the of the, of the stuff. If you, you do modular way and you see all the different versions of the stuff you have in use. Or you, you can use. If you module load for this is an example with Python. System Python, then, then I, I did a module load with, with a new Python version compiled with, with an Intel 2 chain, and so I have instantly a new version of Python, which won't conflict with the, the system version. A module swap, for example, I swap the Intel compiled Python with a, with a GNU tool chain, and it nicely prints out which stuff you need to, you need to switch. Um, of course, there's Zlib and other stuff in there, which is almost everywhere. <laughs> a module spider, this is the, the thing we talked before. Um, it's like you you give it module spider setup tools and it's, it, it gives you everything that's there, like different versions of setup tools, different compilers, if it, 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 it's applicable. What you list basically tells you the current environment, which models were loaded, which models, some of them are dependencies of other stuff I've loaded. And module display will just display the, the contents of a, of a module you have in, <coughs> in, your, in your environment or you may load. So this is a, this is a module for GCC 4.7.2. This is site specific stuff, so the, the paths you see there is like from, from our side, but maybe any other path, of course. There are a lot of, mo a lot, lot of other things to, tell, uh, to talk about, but time is it. So, I want to talk about, uh, for mo uh, about modules for free and open source developers because it's, I don't think it's very much in use in, in open source development except for HPC. Um, they could be a reasonable uh, re replacement for the vast number of language specific environment extraction tools like. The stuff I put in my, my title, RVM, um, Visual and Python Rule and so forth. Um, I, I'm not sure why people don't use it in the, uh, outside of the AT scientific community, but I hope um, that people will, will go on to use it. I'll demonstrate with two examples. Let's do another race of hands. Who is using RVM here? A anybody? <laughs> okay, it's the Ruby environment version manager. Um, it's 20s. 20,000 lines of shellcode last time I checked, it's being rewritten in, in Ruby. It basically installs and manages multiple ver versions of, of Ruby. Also there's a couple of other cool things like gem sets and stuff like that. They recently did a fundraiser for 50,000 euros to do the rewrite in Ruby. They actually, have, <laughs> they actually have corporate sponsoring from different cloud vendors that rely on this stuff because their environment is so crappy that they need it. And I write Ruby code and I'm sorry to say it, it's a piece of shit, it's, it's, it's bloated. I won't ever use it again because it fucked up my environment on a different production and different development machines and web developers love it. <laughs> 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 so what you do is basically install Ruby 2, <laughs> it downloads the source code and <laughs> installs it. You can do an, an RVM list, RVM use Ruby 2, RVM use Ruby 1.9.2 and set it as default. And as a show, sounds familiar, right? You can do it with modules as well. 
So I did an Ruby use Ruby tool then, and, and use um, system, the system Ruby and just wanted to see how many lines of code it executed. So it executes about 6,500 uh, 6, uh, 6, lines of flash code to switch the Ruby version. <laughs> That's the same always call as if the person who, is, who, that, who ends up maintaining your code is a violent psychopath who knows where you live. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it actually fucks with CD. <laughs> if you do it set minus, minus x and just switch to any folder, regardless if there's Ruby code in it or not, it has about 170 lines of, of flash code that it executes for every CD you do. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not the best benchmark, but <laughs> you, did, you do an RBM implode and it's like instant, and without it, it's like uh, you can measure it. But of course, it's shell is very fast now. But if, if you if you're going if you're going to use anything like that, please use RBM or consider using RBM. It's not it's not that that bad as, as RBM in my opinion. Um, so I'm going to switch to something something else. Ah, I forgot something. You, you can't just simply deinstall de with RVM implode because it's, it's, it's just leaving stuff in your environment, <laughs> which is perfect, right? <coughs> so another example is Virtual Amp, which is far better. Most people know it, I use it as well, but um, it's basically the same, same story. You, you create a little environment, this is, which is a sandbox for, for Python stuff. Um, people tend to use it, use it a lot, and if you if you ever use like web projects and stuff like that, you, you come across Peter projects you have like re requirements txt files with like four or five hundred different dependencies in there, and that's just a bad development practice in my opinion. Um, Inactivate is actually about you know, like 15 lines of a flash code. If you have ever, ever looked into it in, in comparison to RVM, with like six, six, half, six and a half thousand lines of flash code. It's a good tool, but um, you ca you probably can do a lot of a lot of stuff also with modules. Um, there's this nice blog article um, on why people and, and virtual and suck by a multi platform developer and Python is like developing on Windows and on Linux uh, and on Solaris, I think. And he did like this, this rant about the whole stuff. And like one of the takeaways was, was it installs stuff like Pip and Easy Install to, to your local environment, which is a bad development practice. In also, if you're, if you're installing stuff and updating yeah. your, your projects from, from GitHub or something like that, it's really a mess. Um, so if you lose, use a web project, your HTTPS team needs to switch to, to the virtual environment, both the both stuff, um, to, to get things working. So as a comparison, handling IPython with modules is pretty easy. Um, you just, this is a module display of the, of the of IPython, which we have in our environment. Um, it does, just does an LD library path, mount path, path, Python path. Uh, so this is the entire module. Um, so you do a module called IPython, and then IPython is working is exactly the right model. That's it. So what if you tell you that things could be a lot, a lot easier if you use modules? You can save time and effort maintaining the stuff. Have reproducibility, which is really a big thing, especially for scientists. They some some versions they, they use in, in uh, scientific software. The output format of some files they use for, for publishing papers is like a di a di different format than the previous previous stuff they used. And they just publish this, this stuff and use different versions of the same software and get, get like results that I won't, I won't publish in the paper, but they do. So I think it's it's important to, to have something that's re reproducible for, for results. And I think you can have a lot more time and fun and concentrate on what is important and that's developing good software. So some people will say, Modus doesn't install software like RBM does. Um, so back in the 70s, there was like Ken Thompson who had this, this idea to write programs with one thing and one thing good. Um, and I think I think modules does exactly that stuff. It's, it, it's man it manages your environment. So if you have, have stuff that needs linking to different different folders or, or stuff like that, that won't it won't do that. But it won't it, it will set your environment. It works with like 99% of the software we use. So like system software, scientific software, graphic stuff, whatever. Um, you want to talk about installing software in the right way? There's a lot of different ways to do it. You can use system packages. You can use um, source distributions, and they are all compatible with environment bodies. You just have to arrange the paths in the right way, and then you can simply load the stuff. But an excellent approach to scientific <coughs> and, and, and HPC um, and packages. Talk to the easy bit guys. I think the next talk is, is, is from them. They have a really good framework that doesn't only compile the software; it does optimized builds and 
different tool chains for different environments, different compilers, but also they, they produce module files that you can use right away. So what, what is what you saw in, in the beginning, like the, the stuff that I, um, I showed about um, module load, module await, and, and all, all this stuff, this was, was all generated with using easy build, like easy build robot and do all the things, and it just works. Okay, thanks, that's it. Any questions? Uh, I mean, uh, it depends. Yeah, what we do is like we install stuff that, that uh, uses pip with easy build, so you have packages for that. But you can do, you can use system packages and just link to the stuff. It depends on what, what you want to do. But uh, modules, so modules are, are, just, modules are in the uh, sandbox environment. Right? It just modifies your environment variables. Yes, uh, if the path is modified, then uh, and well, virtual end. Replicates all the includes uh, lib uh, and b, so obviously that works and models probably is a little bit light, uh, lightweight. So I don't yeah. know if it is a dropping or placement of for that use case. No, it probably isn't. But what we do is, is we build stuff with easy build to uh, as models. So if you have like different different um, tips and stuff and, and, and stuff like that, we just load that with, with easy build and compile it and load it afterwards as a module. Basically, all the modules, it, it like replaces the Python. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it gives you a different Python and it's immutable and it's the Python part different. Okay. What about persistence size? When I have the modules, I want it to be always used. So, is there some yeah. machine that runs? Like you can do that. Like, um, this is one of, one of the features of LMOD that you have like persistent stuff or stuff that is loaded all the time when, when your environment starts. Um, this is very new. This was most one of my shell like RBM because it was really No, um, what we do, and uh, that's optional, is uh, to load um, from etc uh, profile B. So we have an, an, a script that sets up our whole cluster environment, but only that. But you, you may have noticed like PS1 is changed and stuff like that. Okay. And we do that. So okay. that also loads modules. L mode in that. And the do do package manager. Uh, we use easy build for that. But just wait for the like, can you pick your module with RPM or RPM? Your code, yes. Okay. So, so one more thing um, that has been covered. The cool thing about the environment modules is it's a shell agnostic, so it doesn't carry yeah. this set shell or bash. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned dependencies uh, yeah. between modules. At that point, modules become environment packages almost. Um, how do you solve the dependency problem? Because it's like a satisfiability problem. Uh, somewhat, so you have families of modules. Um, some families can interact with ours, like compilers. And then you have modules, you may have noticed like conflict and have a package in there. So if it conflicts with another package, just say no, you can't use it, or you need to swap it with another package. Simple as that. Okay, so you have to you maintain all the, the uh, individual conflicts yourself. You, you, can, you, can you satisfy? Can you if you would do it by hand, yes, yes, you need to. But, um, we, we do it up. Auto-generated, like none of the models we saw are like written by hand. They all they all compiled with easy build. Ah, okay. So I think I was I have this slot because they are going to to talk about easy build and like this is of course a question that pops up. Right? All right, okay. let's close it here. Thank you, Aaron.